There are those who love the steam locomotive, the legendary iron horse. There are those who love India. There are those who love both. Knowing the one was made by the other. The first train ran in India in 1853. 36,000 miles of track would eventually spread all over the subcontinent. India became a vast captive market and a proving ground for British-built locomotives and rolling stock. Today, the Indian Railways, the biggest system in the world under one authority, are the lifeblood of the country. Calcutta is where British rule first took hold in India. This is where Robert Clive, Clive of India, established the political and military supremacy of the East India Company in 1757. Calcutta remained the colonial capital until 1912, more than a century later, and long after India's independence this city of extremes and contradictions still bears the unmistakable imprint of the Raj. The Victoria Memorial was opened in 1921 when it was thought that India would remain under British rule forever. It was conceived in 1901 by Lord Curzon, the Viceroy who liked to dress up. Today the local people also like to dress up when they come to visit the memorial to the Empress of India who never visited the wealthiest colony of her empire. Spanning the Hooghly River is the Howra Bridge, the busiest bridge in the world. Over a million vehicles and pedestrians cross it every day. Calcutta has the only surviving tramway system in India and the oldest in Asia. The first electric trams ran here in 1902. Today there are 36 routes throughout the city, but many believe that trams don't have a place in this highly congested city, so the future of the system is uncertain.
spreading across the eastern Ganges plain is the state of Bihar. This is where Buddha spent most of his life, and it's become the most important place of pilgrimage for Buddhists from all over the world. It's January 1996, and we have come to Bihar on a pilgrimage of another sort. We're here to see the last operating mainline steam locomotives in India, and we've made it just in time. They will be around for only a few more months. As the steam locomotives disappear, so too will the meter gauge tracks on which they run. They are being converted to the Indian standard gauge of 5 foot 6. And in the world's second most populous country, there's no shortage of workers to carry out this highly labour intensive task. <laughs> The steam locomotives that still remain in service are being thoroughly maintained right to the end. the world's biggest single employer and a benevolent employer of over one and a half million people. They have a policy of permanent employment and those presently involved in steam operations will eventually be transferred to other jobs. The local people will soon no longer be able to scavenge for pieces of unburnt coal around the railway tracks. An Indian railway station is more than a stopping place. It's a nexus of life and a social centre. People don't just go to Indian railway stations, they inhabit them, quite literally. In the hours, even days, it takes for your next train to arrive. All your needs are well catered for.
wherever you are in India. When the train comes, everything stops for it. After the train passes, India continues. Most of the state of West Bengal occupies the Ganges Delta. This is where we see the classic, timeless, rural India. Here, like much of India, narrow gauge railways like the Petrosia Reynaga line link rural communities to the main lines. Locomotive 679, built in 1908 is the oldest locomotive in regular service in India. Soon after leaving Reynaga, the vintage workhorse suffers a bent eccentric rod, but luckily there's a quick fix nearby. The nearby village blacksmith is on hand to straighten it out. Of all the railways in India, there is one that stands out from the rest. It is the Darjeeling Himalaya Railway, the famous toy train to the roof of the world. This is India's oldest hill railway. It touches the lives of everyone on its tortuous 88 kilometer route up into the Himalayan foothills. In 1878, Franklin Prestige, agent for the East Bengal Railway, had an idea to build a two-foot gauge railway from the plains to Darjeeling. It took just two years to build this outstanding example of 19th century engineering. It remained privately owned until 1948, when it was absorbed into the national railway system
The DHR locomotives have only four driving wheels. The maximum the line's tight 50-foot radius curves will allow. Plenty of sand has to be spread on the rails to ensure the wheels maintain their grip on the steep and slippery track. Kersion is the main intermediate stop on the line. This is where Central Asia and South Asia meet. Everyone from Bengalis to Nepalis and their market stalls crowd its busy main street, leaving just enough room for the train to pass. Da Jiling, in the shadow of Kangchenjunga, the world's third highest peak, is the end of the line. Once a hill station for colonial officials, escaping the summer heat of the plains, it is now just another bustling Indian town where the quaint English-style cottages have been crowded out by ugly concrete blocks. At Batasia Loop, on the return journey, the train winds its way around the memorial to those bravest of all soldiers, the Gurkhas, many of whom came from this region. The train makes a service stop where we see at first hand the Indian love of complication. Each locomotive has a crew of five, the driver, a coal breaker, a fireman and two sand spreaders. In 1994, the Darjeeling Himalaya Railway was given UNESCO World Heritage status. This should ensure the future of this one of India's many great historic treasures.